We don't live in a patriarchy in the West. We live in... Hey, it's Prince of Queens, and I want to make a quick and simple video explaining my position on this idea once and for all, because while I thought more people understood this, apparently they don't. We do not live in a patriarchy in the West. We live in a globalized, corporate, capitalist society where money and shareholders are more important than any individual leaders. I repeat, we do not live in a patriarchy. Corporations control the world via laws like Citizens United that allow them to influence elections to maximize profits for the corporation. The people who have invested money in the corporation have almost zero power to influence what the corporation actually does, and literally anybody in the entire world can buy shares of any corporation and therefore be a part of it. This includes women, Islamists, and black people. Trans people, too. The CEO who runs the whole thing doesn't even get a whole lot of opportunity to be a leader because the CEO can legally be sued by any shareholder for not doing everything they can to maximize profit. And no, not all of the CEOs in the world are white men by a long shot. And if you want to go down that road, I want you to first examine some Asian corporations because many of them are doing quite well. While it is true that once upon a time, white men and white people had extremely tangible legal rights that gave way to their being rulers, both politically and economically in the West, which were almost always white men, these particular laws that acted as barriers against women and people of color maintaining positions of power have become almost entirely abolished, if not entirely abolished. There are still remnants of the former white male-dominated system in the way that their is much inherited wealth that has been passed down through generations amongst white families especially. Also, many white men still prefer to vote for, hire, or do business with other white men, and there still might be some carefully planned but non-obvious forms of systemic racism that permeate various societies in the Western world. Still, this is not a full-blown patriarchy the way feminists describe by any means, and that line of thinking is something we would be best to do away with. Furthermore, in many aspects of culture, an argument could definitely be made that there are several aspects of matriarchal control in Western civilizations. If you were to look into the power, scope, and already existing laws that feminism has implemented and continues to advocate for. For example, young men compose only around 40% of college enrollment in the West, and yet feminist advocacy groups still fight for affirmative action quotas for young women to get preferential admissions over men. Similarly, men face far stiffer sentences for the same crimes as women, and yet some feminists are lobbying to make these disparities even more vast, and to have women serve even less time. Most importantly, the money going into feminist organizations is often government-funded, so feminism, or what some might call a matriarchy, has been embedded into the tangible structural framework of our civilization, and there can be no denying that. Even though men still hold the majority of predominant positions of power and income, there are several ways in which men get the short end of the stick, which I talk about in some other videos, but I don't want to get into here. However, if you want to research things, I recommend the work of Christina Hoff Summers, Karen Strawn, and the documentary film The Red Pill by Cassie J, which is playing in select cities now. Speaking of Cassie J, she was recently mentioning on the Rubin Report that in her understanding, during the civil rights era, people were largely speaking about problems with the form of capitalism we live in in the West. However, she says that second wave feminists shifted the focus to the almost supernatural abstract force they now call patriarchy to distract from capitalism during the second wave, which was a good marketing strategy for the feminists. Obviously, it's a lot simpler, easier, and appeals to people's emotions on a much more visceral level to blame men for all the problems in the entire world than it is to have to tackle the evils of industrial capitalism or post-industrial corporatism. In my perception, I think it is no accident that every time a strong movement of individuals gets organized to begin speaking out against exploitive and malfunctioning economic systems like the one we live in now, it seems like identity politics comes in and divides everybody. In 2011, we had the Occupy movement, where perhaps millions of people across the world protested against corporation corruption and greed and the big banks that held that all together. 
The 99% of non-billionaire people started working together for a moment, but within a few years, everybody was fighting amongst their own friends about racist microaggressions, cultural appropriation, rape culture, patriarchy, and whatever the hell else they go on about. Do you think that was an accident? Maybe watch a few more of my videos because I go into more detail, but certainly leave me a comment about it and stay tuned because I upload almost every day.